I want to introduce my uh, co-host, but I'll do that in a second before like I confuse you guys. But it's the first ever Heichal podcast. I'm here with Nachum Patrishka. My name is Yitzhi Rosenwasser. We're about to interview Doc, and it's going to be a good one. Welcome back to the Heichal podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Nachum Patrishka. How are you, Nachum? Very good. Baruch Hashem. We're honored to have our amazing guest, Rabbi Dr. Berman. Doc, Baruch Hashem. Mine. Diana's all mine. Yes, everything's fine. Thank you. Baruch Hashem. So, Nachum. How, how, how's your week been going? You know, we haven't recorded in like, yeah, we recorded in like you know, two weeks. Really, a little bit really high schedule over here. Yeah, we, we're trying to catch with each other, you know, they're yeah, trying yeah, to get yeah, our yeah. amazing guest. Nachum, what was Schedules it? don't work out always. Nachum, you had a little something prepared for Doc. Do I have something prepared for Doc? Yes. So, as many of us know, Doc, you were in the IDF for a time. So, I just wanted to, like, ask you a couple questions there. The IDF is known as the Israel Defense Force. So, and right now we're seeing because we're at the Shas Bahama, right? That the IDF, the, you see all these videos about how they're dancing and they're singing and they're like their spirits so high in a time of war where their friends are in battle. How was when you were there? What what was the feeling? What was the morale around all the soldiers? Like was it uh, was it upbeat? Was it? Yeah, I'm not sure if this answers your question, but I remember when we were shipped way up north. Like I was in the war in Lebanon. We were shipped way up north, and there were two false starts. Menachem Begin sent us all the way up to the border. And um, at the last second, uh, I don't know what happened, uh, the Israeli government changed its mind, and we went back to base again. On both of the two false starts, and unfortunately the third start was a real thing, on both of the two false starts, I've never seen this before, I've never seen this afterwards, everybody immediately, I don't care if you were from or fry or anything in between, immediately started locking arms and dancing in circles and wow. and and uh and then laughing and clapping and we're all legitimately happy we didn't have to go to battle this is not an army that looks for conflict this is a an army of citizens that 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 would prefer not to fight but if the if uh eric israel and the united israel is uh, standing behind us and then and they are we have an obligation to defend them and we'll do it but we don't look for it um, I I would say from from that story, what well, you see, you really learned the important the importance of after uh, even with the prior year, you know, you you're around these guys, all the same person wants to come to battle, you know, they're all in the same area, rooms, tents, beds. You know what I mean, like, I think uh, I mean this is, this, is a, a, not, this is not a novel thought, but a lot of people are saying the reason this war came on us, you know, I don't know what's going on in Shemayim, but it, it makes sense that the reason this war came upon us is because there's been so much feud, so much conflict, so much machlokas and Klai Yisrael over things that are, we don't necessarily have to argue about, or at least we can argue about in a menschlich uh, uh, manner. In the meantime, there's no reason that I can't be friends with somebody with a tattoo on his arm. There's no reason I can't be friends with somebody who doesn't think or look like me. Ba'afta l'reacha kamocha doesn't mean he has to be kamocha exactly the same as you. Kamocha means you, you love them like you love everybody else. Not every, you don't agree with everybody else. You don't always agree with your children. You certainly don't always agree with your students. You don't always agree with your life, with your wife. Uh, wife is a Ezer Kinegdo, right? Not Ezer Kinegdo, Ezer Kinegdo. And she's supposed to help you out. Kinegdo means you don't agree on every single topic under the sun. It's not healthy if you always uh, uh, agree. So certainly, there's a lot of room for Achdus and Kali Yisrael. And I think this war was, uh, is Ma'achid Am Yisrael. I, I just hope it stays that way. How do you think we could bear it stay that way after this? That is the question. All I can tell you is, when Kali Yisrael is together, we're like a fist, like a clenched fist. Nothing can beat a clenched fist. But when we're not together, it's not Achdus, it's like an open fist, and the enemy will lop off one finger after another. Because not together, we're weak. But together, we, uh, we, we, we can't be beaten. Uh, how we can maintain it afterwards? Um, I don't know. Our... Um, we're a nation that's known for machlokas. We're, uh, maybe that's why we're such uh, scholars. I mean, you can't, you can't learn a lot of Gomorrah unless you argue with your Harusa and your Rebbe, right? Yeah. So we're a nation that's the uh, biggest sport is probably, uh, is probably arguing. As long as we can keep it civil, who says you don't have to agree with me? Uh, maybe you're right, I don't know. But as long as we have that attitude that we don't all have to agree, but we do all have to get along, then uh, we are absolutely undefeatable. If our Torah will show me Yisrael, show me Epstein. Marcus likes to say all the time, you don't have to like them, but you got to love them. Yes, 
Ray Marcus is 100% right. But I don't have to live by uh, somebody else's uh, Yedem's lifestyle, right? right? But it doesn't mean I can't leave him alone. I can't like him. I can't. Uh, it doesn't mean that I, I that, 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 that what he's doing is uh, is, uh, is is absolutely illegal in my eyes. I uh, I'll know. I, I can let him be. <clears throat> I think the biggest, the, maybe one of the biggest biggest things that people sometimes have to judge is when it comes to Avodas Hashem. Rosh Hashanah says Avodas Hashem is a private matter, right? When somebody starts being very open about it, then you have somebody else who's telling you to say that you're wrong or you're too right. Maybe that's what brings Machlok. Is maybe we should start, you know, when some things that you that you do, you know, that you feel is right, maybe you shouldn't start pushing it on other people. And yeah, the only I, I you probably should never push it. If somebody comes up to you and asks, "What's the right way to do this? What's the right way to do it?" Ask. Okay, so you can tell him. But if the if the person is not open to uh, at the moment to any change. If the uh, person likes things the way they are or move at his own pace like we all do, then leave him alone. You can ruin things by pushing. So we, want, we want to avoid that. Don't be pushy, even though our nature is used to be pushy. I, I wanted to shift the conversation a little bit. You're known for your um, little, like, I always call them bits, I guess. You call them. Like your little phrases, your little whatever. So I want to know where, where like nudnik comes from. Uh, where nudnik. did that start? So Lenadneid really needs to bother somebody, but in a loving fashion, right? So uh, when I was a little boy, my uh, believe it or not, one of my favorite sports was to take a roll of toilet, toilet paper, grab the end of it, and run across the house, see how far I could get before uh, the toilet paper would break. Now, my parents were less than uh, thrilled with having to roll the toilet paper again. It's not, a, not the biggest debate in the world. I remember my father saying, no, Nick, why did you do that? And they have to roll back up the, uh, the toilet paper again. So that, that maybe it started from my dad. My dad used to call me a no, Nick. <clears throat> but it's a term of endearment. It's not, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's nothing bad. <clears throat> For guys that don't know a lot about Doc, like the Doc, where did you grow up? I grew up in Springfield, Massachusetts. Um, the Rav of the, uh, of the shul that we went to was uh, Norman Lamb, who were right after my bris. Went to uh, went to YU, yeah. Oh, went yeah. to YU, and uh, be, long before him, probably back in the '30s, was Rabbi Eliezer Silver. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. He was huge. He was very big in uh, Atzalus, uh, the uh, the Yidden uh, after World War II. My mother, Ali Hashem, remembers him very well. So I grew up in, in Springfield, Massachusetts. We had no yeshiva, so I used to go to public school in the morning, and it was great preparation to go to Tzahal because I got at least one fight every week. And um, in the afternoon, we went to Talmud Torah, right? And uh, that was uh, that's how it started. When I was uh, when I was seventeen or eighteen, I said Brooksha Patroni Miyona Shekazer because I hated Springfield, Massachusetts. And about that time, I went to Eretz Israel. I stayed there for so long that the uh, the rule in Eretz Israel in those days, if a Jew stayed in the country, I think for more than three years, he either had to take citizenship or leave. You couldn't stay any longer than that. So I took citizenship, and a week later, I had a draft notice. Uh, that's uh, that's how the uh, that's how the whole story started. <clears throat> so how'd you how you make of it when you first got that notice? Like, were you first looking at it optimistically, or you first? I uh, I I knew it was in my future. I thought that after taking citizenship, that the uh, it would give you a few years. Uh, but no, it was what, literally seven, literally seven days later. I got the uh, notice. What did I think of it? Uh, you know, I was uh, just barely out of my teenage years, so by definition, you know, infinitely dense like everybody else. So uh, I didn't. I just put it in my back pocket and walked around with it. Uh, what did change a little bit before I went to the army? I met my future wife. So uh, it wasn't so easy being in the army with uh, with a with a wife at home, but uh, but she toughed it out. It turned out. Uh, it turned out okay. I mean, they say, you know, far away from home, it really brings the home inside of you. Like, you really feel like you're, you know, your future wife. I guess you probably got more connected over those three three years, right? It was, no, I was, I was in Emory for two years because I was an immigrant. Um, did we get closer because of the time when I was in the Army? That could be true. I don't know. It's a good question. I haven't really given any thought. Just recently, though, just about a, two months ago, my, this, a similar topic came up. And my wife just revealed to me what a wreck she was when I was in the army, how afraid she was. Uh, I was in uh, the combat unit in Lebanon the whole time. And she never, to my wife's uh, uh, incredible scar, 
She never revealed to me when I went home for a Shishi Shabbat every now and then, maybe once a month. She never revealed to me how worried she was, what a wreck she was. But she knew I, if I took that with me in the army, took that with me in the army, I mean, I wouldn't be able to function as as, as well as I uh, could have. So I was less worried about her. But she just recently, we've been married for 46 years, she just recently revealed to me how worried she was the whole time I, I was in the, I was in the war. So did it make us closer? I, I guess it did. Yes. You mentioned you go, you went over Shabbos every once in a while. How was that transition from I'm in the ba- I'm in the battlefield or I'm on I'm on base and I need to go home? Was it really learn to appreciate Shabbos in that sense? There's two I, things. I yeah, yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, there was there was two things. First, it was very unnatural. You leave a battlefield. And you go to a place that's all sheket and shalva and then and, and clean sheets and, uh, and your wife and cholent and everything. And then, and then the pit in your stomach on uh, late Moshe Shabbos or Sunday morning, you have to go back into the army. Is, uh, my stomach bothers me now as I'm telling you this. This is many years later. However, there was one thing I wanted to always remember and I never succeeded. Uh, when, I, when I came home after the war started, my first leave, so I had been in Lebanon for about a month. So I got to go home just for Shishi Shabbat, nothing else. I had to go back to the army. I think mostly Shabbos is Sunday morning. Um, the, uh, when I got home, my wife took one look at me and just pushed me into the shower. When I got out of the shower, she took one look at me and pushed me back in the shower again. It was a month of filth on me. So um, after I got out of the shower, she said, look, at, we got about four hours until Shabbos. Why don't you take a nap? I hadn't been sleeping very much the last month. And I'll get everything ready, and then we'll have a nice meal. It'll be great, and you'll be, uh, you'll be awake. So I remember laying down in, in, in the bed. I could hear my wife rummaging around the kitchen and smelling the perfume of the detergent used to wash the sheets and the blankets and just the softness of the bed and thinking, you know, this must be what it's like at Olam Haba. When you get to Olam Haba, it's a, it's a clean bed with sheets. You give your wife rummaging around the kitchen. The window is open, a little breeze coming in, a little sunshine. And uh, it, I, I, I promised myself... And I would never forget that feeling. I never appreciate how good it is to sleep in a clean bed, clean environment, everything's so perfect. I guess we all and, take that for granted. It's like us kids growing up, you know, in a yeah. normal household. So, uh, so, uh, but I, I had an advantage over you. I, it's in the other side where it's, where, it's, where it's filthy and noisy and dangerous. And now I'm in a place that's all sheket and shalva and everything great. I promised myself I would never forget. Two weeks after I was discharged, it was, it was gone. It was so, gone. so fast forward a couple of years. What made you come to America? Uh, my wife wasn't happy in Israel. There's, uh, I love Israelis, but there's a tough Horses, Israeli exterior that's tough to deal with when you're an ill young woman from Queens. So, uh, so uh, she was unhappy over there. We almost went back when our kids were learning in Eretz Israel, but they all came back to the United States. So I don't see us going over there until Mashiach comes. Uh, we'll see what happens. Things are always change. Where do you live in Eretz Israel? We live in Israel, way up in the north, just around the Nahariya area. Very close to the border. Very, very close. Near where you were based, or where were you based? It wasn't so far from where I was based. If you go, uh, the border road is very close to there. So if in your mind's eye, you can picture the Mediterranean Sea to your left, which would be west. Go right to the border, which is a walk away. It's very close. Take a right, which is going east. Follow the border road. And uh, right at the foothills of the uh, Golan is a base called Margaliot, which is a Moshav. It's, it's evacuated right now. And uh, that was where the base was. We were right, right on the border. So it wasn't so far away from where I lived. I mean, you couldn't walk there, but uh, but uh, two and a half hour drive wasn't a big deal. <clears throat> and then I guess once you moved to America, you moved right away to Muncie? You lived no, we, uh, we moved to Island Park. Both of them, my wife and I went to uh, Rutgers. I was learning uh, chemistry, physics, math, and my wife was, became a speech pathologist. From there, I, uh, I had a few jobs, but the major job I got after that was as a professor at the University of Dayton in Dayton, Ohio, after leaving Rutgers. And then we were in Dayton now for four years. What's the timeline? Uh, 1990, I graduated PhD. 1990 to 94, I uh, was in Dayton, Ohio. In 1994, I got a chance to learn by Rabbi Shore. In, uh, in the, on the Orso Mayor campus in Muncie. So, uh, so I never looked back. As, an, as, I, as I broke Shabbat I hated living in Ohio. And uh, we drove a 19-foot uh, U-Haul to, uh, Muncie. To, to Muncie. 
the Victoria Gardens. Right over yeah, there. Victoria Gardens to where I am uh, right now. Well, I guess uh, Arsameach, the campus hasn't really changed much. The, tell the building's still a little bit the same. Uh, the building is still the same. I, I, I still live with Rabbi Shore, uh, but on uh, Thursdays at his house. Everybody's gotten a lot older. And I have a Chavrusa that was in the same shear with uh, Rabbi Shore, my Chavrusa, many, many years. And I learn and call every morning uh, until I come over here. And on Thursdays, we ask our questions to Rabbi Shore. Also gives us Fas and Mishur on Torah anytime. You would say he got you into becoming a Rebbe and doing Chinuch? Uh, not actively. I took a lot from him, but he never encouraged me to do that. There were other Rebbeim who did encourage me to do that, but uh, Rabbi, Rabbi Shore did not. Very neutral. I started TABC in 96. I was there for 22 years, then I came over here. <clears throat> so you mentioned you did TBC for 22 years. Now now we're all together, right? We're all here in Heichal. What made you really choose here after you left there? At uh, TABC, I had two periods left at the end of the day where the schedule came out. And instead of uh, waiting through the Muncie traffic on the way home, uh, I was given the opportunity to teach two physics classes over here. Rabbi Steckler offered me two physics classes. Um, so I grabbed them. The... Uh, Later that year, Rabbi Steckler said if I was to come here full-time, he would even give me a shear. So uh, you, can't, uh, the, 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 you can't say no to a shear. So I, uh, I can't say no to Rabbi Steckler, but I can't say no to a shear. So I, uh, I, I, I took him up on that offer. So also, at this stage of my life already, my wife and I have been saving for a long time. I could afford to uh, come over here, even if it wasn't the, uh, the, the, the same as TBC. So the, this was your first rugby job? This is my first, I had a job at TABC teaching Mishnah, if you call that. Uh, probably not the same as being a Rebbe. But uh, teaching uh, Bikiyas over here and uh, being at uh, Night Seder was my first, uh, really my first opportunity to really be a Rebbe. What was your first, like, welcome to Heichal moment? Is there, like, a pivotal point where you said, oh, this is like Heichal? This is where I want to, you taught two physics classes first. Yeah, I'll tell you the, the, the big difference, is, especially in those days when it was a little yeshiva, whenever a problem would come up, you name it, profound, not so profound, Rabbi Steckler would immediately call a Rebbe's meeting, we would meet in his office, and everybody's opinion was listened to. I, I was not used to that. It was, the places I came from were all trickle-down. The guy at the top would decide what everybody else is going to do, and then, then, then sometimes you did it. But uh, here, he was really, really interested in everybody's opinion. So I remember one time, it was really not important what the topic was, I had an opinion, and I suggested a way to get us out of this problem. And he thought about it, and he said, you know, we'll do it Doc's way. So I was so thrilled that the voice of a faculty member had some meaning over here. That really, uh, uh, that really, uh, that really made me like the place. There was another time when there was a chasna, and everybody from, uh, from Heichal, all the Rebbeim at Heichal were all dancing together at this chasna. I see Rabbi Steckler has been able to, to produce over here a family feel. So uh, I didn't feel at the other places I worked. So uh, that, that's what really makes, uh, makes me like this place. How many members were part of the faculty when you first joined? Not many. Uh, it was much smaller than now. And then support staff was almost nil. Like 40 kids here, right? When I first came here, uh, it was the first graduating year. So I uh, figured out it was probably, I don't know, 50, 140. So it was like 50 guys here, let's say, right? And there was Rabbeim here at the time. Now that you see like the evolution of Heicha, you know, there's over 200 guys here. How do you like keep yourself, you know, in your lab, you know, keep the guys entertained in here and not like try to lose focus on your guys? And that's no problem. That, that that hasn't changed hardly at all. The guys are the same. It's the same schnitt, the same uh, type of guys that are uh, that are coming over here. Um, I teach the classes the same. I uh, I recycle the stories every four years so people don't get to hear the stories too many times. Uh, no, from that point of view, nothing has changed. Administratively, things have changed. Uh, it's not as heimish as it was before, where the, the slightest problem we'd all meet in Rabbi Steckler's office. It can't be done anymore. The staff is too big. The staff is not, also not available all at one time. I think that's the natural uh, evolution of any, uh, any, 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 any corporate environment, if I can say that, um, that it becomes less, uh, becomes less heimish as time goes. But otherwise, my teaching techniques haven't changed at all. No, nothing. Mentioned you teach physics and math a little bit. I don't know if you teach math anymore. I, but... uh, yeah, I've taught math plenty and right. uh, in chemistry. I, I taught. So there's a uh, comment says all the time that math and science are chachmas. And there's a certain chachma to it. Like Torah has a chachma. 
what's your what's your like how do you make it sort of avodas Hashem when you teach science? It's kind of it's part of avodas Hashem. It's not just another subject. It's not so hard. First of all, if you noticed uh, when uh, when when I taught uh, when I teach physics and when I taught chemistry, um, I never used the word emis or proofs. Because uh, you can only say that for Torah. However, you can't say that word for mathematics. Mathematics is opinionless. You can't tell me it's not pi r squared. So there is emis in mathematics. It's more than just, I think it's more than just a chokhmah. I also went once, uh, many years ago, to the Kalva Rebbe to get, uh, get a bracha and also to get eitzas in Hino, how to teach my own kids and also uh, my students. So he asked me what I taught. When I told him primarily physics, he became very, very excited and said, what's your problem? Make, make your shear into a, uh, make, make your class into a shear. There's no reason you can't teach. You can't teach Chochmas Hashem or Hashem's attitude to run the Bria uh, uh, through uh, physics and chemistry and mathematics. Um, why, when I introduced uh, my, uh, when I used to teach chemistry over here, I introduced the chemistry lectures by asking the kids, what's the most important thing you need in your life as far as chemistry goes? Well, it's oxygen, right? After that, what's the most important thing? Hydrogen, because the hydrogen and oxygen make water. After that, what's the most important thing? Carbon, because the carbon, the hydrogen and oxygen will make carbohydrates. That's your risonos, that's your food. What's, the, what's something you need to live uh, with, but if you don't get so, uh, enough of it, you can live for a long time and not know about trace elements like zinc, uh, other elements as well. Notice that the elements that you need the most, particularly oxygen, is the easiest to get and the cheapest to get. Just... And you got it. It's a no, uh, it's a no effort on your part. What's the next thing you need? You need uh, hydrogen in the form of hydrogen oxygen to make water. Notice that's a little bit harder. I have to walk to the sink. I need a cup. I have to walk. Uh, a primitive man to walk to a well or to a river. The things that are hard to get, like the trace elements, the zinc was one. Uh, you have to. You, you, it's it's hard to get, but you don't need much. You don't need much. The the, the zinc that you get in a tomato will be uh, enough to keep you going for uh, for a long, 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 long time. The mazonas are a little bit harder yet. You have to work for it. You have to grow plants. You have to, uh, you have, to have cattle. You, uh, uh, you have to have more work. But uh, it, there's enough of it in enough abundance for, uh, for your work to pay off. But oxygen you cannot live without for more than a few minutes, and you get it right away, and it's free. So it, it, there's immense chokhmah the Bria. I can go on and on about this. Immense chokhmah the Bria. Uh, I think uh, I'm quoting Rabbi Comet. When, uh, who says that chemistry is Hashem talking to you. He, uh, when he explains how he put together the entire Bria like a Lego set, this is, Hashem, uh, this is Hashem's uh, Lego set, and he's talking to you. you. You shared a lot of things with the guys, I guess, teaching a share, so to speak, into a math class, and vice versa, turning a math class into a share. You also share a lot about food. You already know the top number one is shawarma. I like shawarma. Where you put, smoke, smoke meat is uh, maybe well, equal to shawarma. We have like a ranking, like the top five foods. Obviously, Heichal's uh, lunch is not a <laughs> Well, you know. we don't, that's not part of the, the, the discussion today. Uh, but my, my favorite food, believe it at all times, if I, it, you have to give me this every day, believe it is hamburgers. Grilled hamburger, I love a good grilled hamburger. Uh, after that would certainly be shawarma, smoked meat, uh, schnitzel, you know, flesh. I like the, I like the proteins. Flesh. Would you put like a milk eggs or like a... Power of dish at number five. Well, five maybe maybe a, 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 a nice thin crust pizza, right? Uh, not like you guys get over here in Teaneck, but uh, like we can get in Muncie, of course, it's much much better. Ellie's bagels. It's like Ellie's a special Ellie's mention Ellie's or it's on the list. A whole board belly of bagels is also very very good. <clears throat> yeah, I do like my food. That's true. Yeah, and you love sharing with the guys. You bring it in, see him, the Mazonas. We really appreciate it. My no wife used to make the sure. same Mazonas when I was in the army. And uh, when I'd come back from leave, I didn't want the guys to be jealous of me. I was the only married guy in the unit. So uh, they could be jealous of me. They're going home uh, once every two months. I'm going home once every three weeks or so. And my wife would make a massive thing of Mazonos that I'd keep in the, in the back of my uh, back pouch over here, my uh, phone, and uh, my ammunition belt. And uh, I would give it to the guys uh, all the time. The same, same, for, the same, the same Mazonos that you guys have, e- have eaten in my class. Um, so that's exactly what, uh, what, what my wife used to make for us. Doc, you've always shared a lot with us, like bringing the food. You know, we always appreciate you brought a family feel into not only Heichel, into the share room, into the lab. What's one thing that you would like to tell the guys? You know, if you really had a message before, like, all the guys graduated, you know, our grade, you tell us. Do I have a minute? 
If a minute, if you a have minute? five minutes to be good. Fine, so. fine. Maybe you've heard me say this before, but uh, it's, it bears repeating. There's a Gomorrah on, I think it's Rosh Hashanah, which one, Yudkes? No, I think it's Sukkah, Yudkes. You guys have to find out what the right one is. Um, which talks, Rava says to the fishermen in Naharda, Naharda means Naharda, there's a river over here. Be aware there's a little fish out there called the Tachnasa, right? It's a kosher fish. However, it can easily get mixed up in a non kosher species which looks similar. However, you never have to worry if you're fishing in a place with a strong current because the non kosher species can't handle the strong current because they don't have a backbone. If the kosher species has a backbone, <clears throat> can handle this uh, current. What do you learn from this? You want to navigate the currents that are out there when you leave the yeshiva. Right now, you're in a place where you're well protected. But when you go out into the world, there's some bad currents out there. You want to be able to navigate that, you need a backbone. You have to be tough. You have to be able to say N-O sometimes, even if you think you're going to find it embarrassing. At the end of the day, you'll only get respect for that. Thanks so much, Doc. This was very, very meaningful, very inspirational. And um, we appreciate it, and we hope all the viewers out there, listeners, sorry, listeners out there can get something from this. Thank you for having me here. Thank My you, Doc. Pleasure. Thank you. All right, welcome back. You know, we took a little break over there. We just had heard from Doc. Now we're, uh, you know, we're welcomed by a uh, fan favorite in the school, Hef. Hef, how are you? Doing good. It's great to be here. And, you know, it's great to have you on. You know, Nachum has a little interview right now he has to go to, you know, prestigious college. But, you know, it's always good to hear from, you know, some of the Talmido at Hecha. How are you? Doing good. How, Learning how, good. How, how's Yeshiva been this year? It's very good. Really growing a lot in we, many have, aspects. Who do you have as a rugby this year? Right, Marcus. So how do you how do you enjoy this year? It's gishmak. You you like being away from Akiva, you know, in the morning or like? Yeah, we, uh, we need our space sometimes. Your space sometimes. So there's a there's a little call going on around the hallways. Akiva might be wearing a white shirt next year. Like what's? Oh, uh, is there like? I have no comments on this. No comment. No comment. You're gonna join him or no? The style, where like a black tie with like a blue shirt, the school with like a blazer, and no, all that's like this like like potential. It's potential. So I see, I see you got a nice, ri- a, a nice watch on your wrist right now. Just explain to us a little bit about the meaning behind it. It's a great timepiece. You know, it's a good talking piece. So it just starts just a conversation. Conversation whenever. Yeah, it's a little it. Mickey Mouse on the front. I like that. Well, what do you say is your favorite watch? I'm gonna have to go with. Um, I really like a lot of Omega. I do. Good call. Yeah. Obviously, some like AP, that kind of stuff, but that's higher. More level. higher class, yeah. Yeah. It's just whatever styles catch my eye. I'm not such a big Rolex guy, but you know. Wow, this is crazy because guess who just called me? Nakam Patrishka just called me. He said he's coming back on the show. Let's get you both on. Nakam, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I just got a uh, how was that? interview. How was that interview? It's awesome. I, I said before about how the exactly. prestigious college came to interview our guy, you know? Wow. Ah. Let's see. What did he ask you? You had any inside information? He asked me where I'm going next year. That was basically it. And he doesn't care about anything else? No. Well, you're already part of the program in the pre- Yeah, yeah freshman center, uh, the whole thing. Yeah, the whole thing. How do you say that's going for you this year? Not good. You're passing the classes or no? Not really. <laughs> no college credits? I hopefully, think, hopefully. Hopefully, all right. That's last semester. Whatever, last semester was good. This semester, you know, you're easing oh, out. We're finally going to graduate. I really told, I told half about, like, how I got to watch you, you know. Like, we grew up in, together pretty much since ninth sure. grade. You know, it's ninth big grade, years, big four years. years, big years. You know, we were still wearing masks back in the day. Sure. What would you say is your biggest take the past four years? What do you mean take? Divine take. Something you really found that you grew in from Hegel. Grew in or grown? Wow, way to auto-correct me. Grown. Ah, that's a tough question. Probably my Torah study. Yeah. How do you say that like affected affected you with like the my, Nachum stage? My Nachum stage. Um, I think every stage of my life was my Nachum stage. Or as I like to say my Nachum stage. Nachum, yeah. That's really my name. That's everyone, really your name, everyone right? should know everyone that. Nachum, and, and everybody should know. The Navi's name is Nachum. So, you go call me Nachum, I'll respond. But if you want to say it correctly, it's Nachum, whatever. At my bris, my father probably said Nachum. Nachum, all right. Yes, he wears a big surgi. He's probably someone Israeli. If you think surgi means Israeli. I right, Patricia, right? I P. I P from uh, Y and J, correct? Anyone's looking for just quick ad over here? Anyone's looking for something to do second half of the summer? 
the first half of the summer. Achinu is available for counselors only. And Achinu is here in Hegel, right? Nope. R Y and J. They switched it this year. Yeah. Wow, that's big stuff. So who's in the? So wait, so our stuff could potentially stay safe over the summer, is what you're saying? Exactly. Wow. Go have. What do you think about that? Nachum is really. It's great to be acquainted with you. You know, you're a Hegel prodigy. I, I, you any college that you go to will be lucky to have you. You know. I think any place I that applied to one college. I think any place that ever has Nachum, Nachum, is privileged to be in his presence. One. Two, his personality is way more sophisticated than anyone else's. You can have a conversation with pretty much anyone. You get along with everyone. No one hates you. It's like you and Ferber, the only people that know. I've never heard anybody say anything negative about. You know, like you guys get along with everyone. I, I, I guess I gotta say you're like one of like one in six billion. You know. Appreciate it. Truly a top guy. Truly a top guy. You know. I really appreciate the uh, the the compliments. What are your plans for the summer? I'm going to the summer. So first half, I'm going to Shoko. You're going to Steig away? Yeah. Schwartz? Schwartz. That's random. Schwartz doesn't go there? Schwartz goes to Moko, no? Oh, that Shoko's the one that he hates. Awkward. Oh, oh, that's, that's a little awkward. He, that's the one he hates. All right. Okay, my bad. <laughs> you're going to Shoko? Yeah, Shoko. And then second half, probably Achin. Achin, are you going to work your head counselor? Uh, I'm still trying. Go-kart driver? No, go-karts, right? They can't. Get out of here. Why not? They can't have go-karts. Yeah, but what campus? It's an indoor campus. Bro, why does the people got to do this? So, Yitzi, what are you thinking about spending your summer doing this year? Oh, my God. Why can't so, Yitzi, what do you plan on doing this summer? You know, now that I got an offer from Nahum, uh, maybe Achenu. Maybe I should come by Achenu, no? You want to see that? You know, like you brought it up about the bris. You know, maybe I'll become a mile. I don't know. I got a lot of stuff going on in the summer. I don't know. Maybe I'll do catering versus. I don't know. I, I got a lot of ideas going on. Did, did you say Mohel? Mile, yeah. W- why? Well, you see, it's just like a like a good job. You get a lot of money. You know, like you're not supposed to get paid for it, but like every parent gives like a nice amount of money to the mile. Uh, okay, if that's what you want to do with your life. Why not? It's a big mitzvah, you know that. You inspired. No, but it's weird. Why is it weird? It's weird. Why is it weird? <laughs> to be like, you know what I'm gonna do this summer? I'm gonna become a mile. I'm gonna be. Lo- I'm gonna learn. You know, you gotta learn. You're seven. Th- how old are you? 17, 18? 17, 17. You're seventeen years old. You're not becoming a mile. All right, fine. So let myself probably end up doing catering instead of my. Crush you know? dreams right there. Come on. Yeah, you just crush my dreams. Sorry, my bad. Not yeah. Really sorry though. You know, you just ended my dreams just like we're about to end this podcast. Uh, Nachum. See you next time. It was a great episode. Great episode. Have you want to log us out? Logging out. Great to have you on, Hef. Thank you.